We used to use WoW Model Viewer to import characters, but that doesn't work with the recent versions of WoW. So today we'll learn how to use WoW Export to do that. Welcome aboard this tutorial. My name is Belvane and I will be your teacher for this flight. I've been making Warcraft art with Blender for 8 years. You're welcome on my Discord where we share techniques and help newbies. I also give private lessons if you want focus teaching or to make art with body parts that look suspiciously like plants. We'll need several things. You can download WoW Export from here, XPS Tools, formerly known as XNLR Mesh, from here. Click here and download the zip. You'll need Blender, currently the latest version is 4.1. And because XNLR Mesh doesn't work with 4.1 yet, we're going to use an older version of Blender, the latest one that did work with it, which is 3.6. Go to the same Blender page, download, previous version, download any Blender, scroll down to 3.6, and select your OS. I'm going to go with Windows 64 zip. Click download, save it somewhere. Install Blender, install the WoW export app, install the other Blender. Make sure you have separate shortcuts for each Blender version because you will need those and fire up WoW export. Click open local installation, navigate to where that is and then you don't have to get into any other folder here. You just need the World of Warcraft one, select folder, click and let it run. It takes a few seconds. We're dealing with characters today, not with any other of the things we can do with the software. So let's click the characters tab at the top. We can import a character. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Select your region, type in the character name. You have autocomplete on the realm name. Import character, and sometimes it works. You can navigate the viewport. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you can rotate the character. Right mouse button allows you to pan. Don't touch show texture overlay. At this point, it's still buggy. If you untick it, it might disappear and we'll need it later. If your character is missing part like this one, scroll down in the geo sets and find whatever you think is correct. Don't mess with it anymore at this point because it might bug out when we start dealing with the character options here. If you're not importing a character, you can create one here. Start with the model, select the race, select body, type 1 or 2, go to options. Let's go with your good old classic green skin. Under face, in some races you'll see those asterisks. It says underneath that those use unsupported features. In newer models, their face features really have bones of their own, like the noses and shins and drapier exotics. Wow Export doesn't support those bones right now, so this is what those asterisks mean. There's a walk around to get those working, but that's for a different tutorial. Right, for eye colors, you can zoom in and out on your character with a mouse wheel. It's near impossible to see the eye color in half the models right now because either their eyes are closed in the default position or if they're open, they have this new layer which again hides the eye color. This is what we need the texture for. With the arrows here, you can navigate to the eye texture and then you can see what color you're picking. The scars feature doesn't have any effect here, but that's because it's only a void for specific skin colors. This isn't one of them. However, let's give him a nice brutal tattoo. You might notice my guy is missing ears. If you think you've reached the end of your customization window, you didn't. Scroll down here, find all the other options. This is also where you get your ears, your jewelry, and various other things. Tick include or exclude base clothing according to what you want, and click export GLTF. Sadly, at this point, we can't save a character, so if we close the app, we'll have to remake this character next time. Once you click export GLTF, you get this alert at the top, view and explorer, you can click this one and see exactly the folder where it was saved. This is useful, so minimize it, but don't close it. Let's also minimize the app. I hope you installed Blender 3.6 by now. And let's take a look at how to import GLTF and install the XNLR Mesh add-on. This is Blender 3.6. We'll need to bring our character in. If we didn't already, we'll need to load the Import GLTF native add-on. Go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, search for GLTF, and tick it. This is also where we install XNLR Mesh. Click Install again. Go to wherever you saved your add-on. Select it. It's zipped, you do not have to unzip it. Just click Install Add-on. Don't forget to tick it. It says automatically and will be there next time you launch Blender 3.6. We can close this now. Remember I said it was better to leave this folder open? Now I can see where my character is. Let's go to File, Import, GLTF, WoW Export Folder, Character, or Mail. There it is. Click Import. I'm going to make the bones visible through the body. You don't need to do this, just take a look to understand. See, there's a whole lot of bones and it's a bit of a visual mess. It's near impossible to work with the armature this way. What XNLR does is clean it, arrange it, and simplify it for us. By the way, this has been a source of confusion in my last tutorial because I forgot to mention this. There are four ways to display things in the viewport. Wireframe, solid, 
textured and rendered. I'm gonna stay on textured for now. Right, this armature is a mess, let's quickly fix it. Click the armature, hit H to hide it, hit A to select everything. The body is imported in separate gel sets, which we don't want. Hold down shift and left click any of them. You see, one became this lighter orange. This means everything is selected, but the lighter orange is the active one. Hit Ctrl J and now it joined them. Now this is a single object. Save your file obsessively and often. Now we can unhide the armature by clicking the I and we send it to be cleaned at XNLR, just like a car wash. Click the armature, shift click the body, go to File, Export, XNLR, ASCII, save it on the desktop with a reasonable name and export. XNLR is going to produce a clean armature, so we can get rid of this one. Select it, hit X, delete. Let's click the eye icon to hide the orb and see what XNLR did for us. File, import, XNLR, ASCII. Select your reasonably named file, import XNLR. What we have is a much friendlier armature and a very pink body, which is Blender's way of saying, I can't find any textures for this. We don't care, we don't need this body. We only need the armature. Let's hide this new armature. Hit A to select everything, X to delete it, bye bye. Now what we have is an OR from before and an armature from now, but they're not connected. If I move the armature, the OR body is not impressed. If we select the OR and go to the properties panel under the wrench tab, this is where the modifiers live, we can see it has an armature modifier, but it's red. It means it's pointing at an armature that's no longer there. We can get rid of it and tell it to use this new clean armature instead. Click the OR body. Shift click the armature. Now you can see again they're both selected but the armature is the active one. Hit Ctrl P to parent the orb to the armature. The armature will be the parent and we're going to select with empty groups. It doesn't look like much because they're in different collections. See, the armature is under orc and the body is not. If it drag the body into the orc collection, it vanishes and that is because it's nested under the armature. Now this is more intuitive, and as you can see when I have the orb mesh selected, it has an armature modifier, which is active. So if I select the armature and up here move from object mode to pose mode, I can select a bone, hit R to rotate and move my arc. Let's move back to object mode and hit 1 to look at it from straight on. 1 is the front view in Blender, 3 is from the right and 7 is from the top. But as you can see, our default character is imported facing right. This will be very confusing later. To save us this confusion, let's rotate this character to face us, the default front camera of Blender. Let's hit R to rotate, Z to constrain it to the Z axis, minus 90 for the amount of degrees we're rotating on Z axis, and enter to confirm. Now this orc is facing us. If I click 3, I can see him from the right. If I click Control 3, I can see him from the left. 7 from the top, Control 7 from the bottom, etc. Let's see another thing that's better done before we move on. Hit N to open the null shelf and like Logan Fogger, the rotation indicates we rotated this from its default position to be 90 degrees. That means if I undo any rotations by hitting Alt R, it resets. We don't want that. Also, as long as Blender remembers that the default rotation of this object is facing right, it will give us a world of issues. To avoid that, you always want your rotation to say 0, 0, 0 and your scale to say 1, 1, 1. Currently, the body is okay. Rotation 0, I'm going to ignore the W, and scale 1. Let's go to the armature, Control A, apply rotation and scale, and see now it's fine. Only the body inherited a minuscule rotation which I don't understand, it's a new thing. Anyway, select the body, Control A, apply rotation and scale. Perform your obsessive every two seconds file saving. We're done with XNLR, so we can do everything else in the latest version of Blender. Let's open this file in Blender 4.1. Just remember, once you opened it in the latest version, it's likely it won't open again in any previous version, so that's worth remembering. The character can be posed with the armature as it is, but there's a few things that make it a bit confusing, and we can solve all of them in this new bone collection panel. If you select the armature, here in properties you will have the armature tab, and in it you have the bone collection panel. You can hide or display a collection. Bones can appear in more than one collection, which sometimes is confusing. If I click and drag the eye, I can display all of them or hide all of them. And XMR did something that's gonna help us. In layer number 2, it already put all the bones that currently don't move anything. If I switch to pose mode, hit A to select everything, hit G to grab and move, you see? They move nothing. They would move things if I had a ponytail, a tablet, or a cape. Let's rename this layer, no effect, and hide it for now. I find the multitude of layers confusing, so I prefer to move all the bones to one layer and then sort them the way I like. Let's display all of them except for the no effect. Hit A to select everything. 
M, like mother, to move them, and move them to layer number one. Now I can get rid of all these layers, which are empty. Select one, click this minus. If you keep doing it, they all get deleted. Let's go to layer number one, and do the confusing things. One, the bone colors are visually confusing for me, so if you want to remove those, hit A to select all the bones, and go to the bone panel, viewport display, click this drop down, hover over default colors, hold on Alt and click. Alt means this action applies to everything that's selected, not just the active object. Let's Alt A to deselect everything. Issue number two. Some bones have something called auto IK. You can see it if you open the null shelf with M like Methano and go to the tool tab. See, this is auto IK and it sticks. If I click the bone and I try to rotate it, you can see it turns this sort of peach color. Sometimes that's good, sometimes this creates unpredictable behavior. Personally, I prefer to remove it from all the bones before I start working and add IK where I need it. Let's hit A to select all the bones, hold on Alt again and uncheck Auto IK. It removed it from all the bones. Next problem, overlapping bones which do exactly the same. These are problematic because I can move one and one is connected to the other. This is something that happens with GLTF, it was not a thing with FBX. Luckily we have a good way of selecting all those bones and we can move them to their own layer and forget about them forever. We can do it with selecting bones by name. Be in pose mode, make sure nothing is selected. Let's also display the no effect in case some of those bones are there. Go to select, select pattern. And here we type asterisk, dollar sign, asterisk, enter. There are some of those. Hit M to open the move panel. Select new bone collection, call it what the fud, and click move. Let's hide this collection now. Let's repeat this. Select, select pattern, and this time we type asterisk, underscore P, enter. These are the really annoying overlapping ones. With them selected, hit M, like mother, move them to the what the fudge collection, and that's solved. Let's hide the no effect collection again. Next, twisty bones. Twisty bones are bones like that, which twist a part of the body instead of moving it. They only appear in the limbs, never in the body or the face. So legs, arms, maybe tails. They're usually hard to see and click because they're very small and they're hiding behind other bones. For example, if I zoom in on the foot, I select the foot bone, the shin bone, and hit H to hide. This here is my twisty bone. With digitally grade legs or pandaren, which have complex legs, you can find them all over the leg. They can be quite confusing, especially when you set up IK. To see them easily, I like to hide the long bones. This and that. The legs and the pelvis. You don't have twisty bones ever in the head, braids, beard or neck, so you can hide those. They will not be in the spine, so you can hide that. And be careful when you select the arm, because the one here, this is a twisty bone. And this little one here as well. So make sure you select the long bone. H to hide. Hide the hands. Hide the thumbs. Now, be careful. This one, in the finger, this is not a twisty bone. There are no twisty bones in the fingers. Neither are the feet. We'll get to those in a moment. But the others are the twisty bones. These, these, and these. Let's hit M like mongoose to move them, create a new collection, and call that twisty. Move them, hide them. The last issue is very, very small bones, which are unintuitively positioned. For example, this one. It might look like a twisty bone. It's very hard to target, the direction is misleading, but if I hit R to rotate it, I can see it's actually controlling the last finger number. I want to move and position it so it's more intuitive. Let's hit Alt-H to unhide all the bones we hit before. Zoom in in here, switch from pose mode to edit mode, select the end of this bone, and move it. Same for all the others. Make sure to align them from all angles. We all know how confusing viewing things in 3D can be. I had to say this sentence six times. There's a couple of more sneaky bones. The toes, the braids, and the beard. I like renaming the layer 1 collection to main for clarity. Now the armature is simplified, intuitive, and with less confusing issues, so we can move on to clean the materials and the body mesh. I had a few people ask how to open a model's eyes. This orc's eyes were open by default, but that's not the case with all races. So to open the eyes, click the armature, switch to pose mode, find the bone that looks most likely to be the upper eyelid, hit G to grab and Z to constrain it to the Z axis, which is up or down, and left click to confirm. We can switch back to object mode now. Let's hide the armature, because we're going to clean the materials. I like giving the model a descriptive name. To fix the materials, select the body, go to the Properties panel in the Material tab. The materials are not intuitively named, and it's a little hard to see what each one is, but we can open the Preview panel, change the Preview from Sphere to Flat, and now we can see that this is the body. 
The next one is a hair. Let's rename all of them. I'm not gonna bother with the last one because this is a weird eye reflection material. Let's zoom in. This material is the reason the eyes look creepy. Click the body, switch to edit mode, Alt A to deselect everything. With this material highlighted, click select. It selects all the faces that have this material. Now you can hit X and delete vertices. Now this material is not used by any face on this model. We can get rid of it by clicking the drop down and selecting remove unused slots. You might notice that the materials look a little washed out. We can see the reason in the shader editor. Drag the corner and open a new window here. Change it to be the shader editor. Make sure you are on object mode. It shows the material on the object and not on the world. Select your first material. Here in the principles BSDF, go to specular and change the IOR level to zero. Unless you want your orc to be covered entirely in plastic, in which case you can remove the roughness and have a good laugh. Fix the specular IOR level on all the materials. We can close this window now. The model is a little angular. It's easier to see in solid view. It also has invisible holes in it. Look, if I zoom in, select this vertex and move it aside. You see these two vertices look as if they're one, but they're just overlapping. And last, this entire model is made of triangles. This is typical of game models, it's optimized, but it creates weird artifacts when you put a subdivision surface on it. So let's solve these one by one. Put a subdivision surface modifier on the orc. Click add modifier, tap in sub and you get it. And we can disable it for now because it'll just slow things down until we need it. First, we turn everything from tries to quads. Switch to edit mode, hit A to select everything, Alt J, and in this context menu, make sure to tick all five of those checkboxes, otherwise you'll likely get texture artifacts. To close those holes, we run an operation called merge by distance. It merges all the vertices which are closer than a specific distance. But if I run it now, it might merge the hair into the skull, for example, or the eyes into the eye sockets. Which means if later I want to change something about those, I won't be able to. So I like doing those separately. To separate the hair, we go to edit mode, hit Alt A to make sure nothing is selected, and go to the materials panel, click on the hair material and hit select. To select this one, we can click on the accessories material and hit select. For the orcs, <laughs> I'm gonna call those orcs crunchies. I'm gonna use those to demonstrate another way to select things, and that's using the UV map. Let's open a new window, change it to be the UV editor, I want this to display the texture which is the scrunchies. I think that's the body texture. Let's do that. And if I click those two arrows, I get to see all the vertices in the model, not only the selected ones. The scrunchies are down here, which means I can very easily select them. We can close this one down now. Now that we have the hair isolated, we can hit M, like more grain, to merge by distance, and select by distance. And this removed 400 vertices or something. Let's hit H to hide this. Hit A to select everything else, M by distance, and this removed 800 vertices. Alt H to unhide everything. If you want to separate the hair completely, click P to open the separate menu and choose separate by selection. Let's rename this hair. Don't forget to display the subdivision surface modifier before you render. And now our orc is ready to be posed. I hope you learned something useful in this tutorial. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about likes or subscribes, but if you want to make me happy, you can come by my Twitch streams and tell me it helped. That would make me very, very happy. Have a great day and let's all make pretty art.